line has been down since the volcano eruption and I do thank you for some of you reaching out to me yesterday uh, there has been uh, some uh, communication with some of the outer islands some of the outer islands have mountains where people can escape to in case there is a tsunami uh, in the main island where most of the people live uh, there are no mountains so it's kind of flat pulling in uh, but we're hoping that their internet line is uh, uh, in the sea, so it was probably uh, impacted or got cut during the uh, volcano. So I do, uh, yes, yeah, so please pray for, for them and the people of Tonga. So a volcano uh, in the water is that powerful that it can travel thousands of miles in around the, the world because it traveled and impacted uh, the West Coast, and that is over 6,000 miles of travel. And even in the UK where it was felt, and that's over 10,000 miles because they're on ground opposite end. But so far, there we have not heard any <coughs> news, but I know that our closest uh, neighbors are New Zealand and Australia. They're trying to send planes there, but because of the ashes, uh, they are not able to see, so uh, their ships are uh, en route to Tonga. So if you didn't know where Tonga was, now you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thank you for so much for asking, and thank you for your prayers and your, uh, your concerns. I, my main line of communication with them and with my family is through social media because it is free and you're able to instant message uh, them so when their line is up so uh, but it's so hopefully it will be restored uh, sometime soon but uh, we pray that all is well you know that is an area that uh, is accustomed to volcanoes and cyclones you know you live on an island that's the stuff that you deal with you live here in Texas or in Arkansas or in Kansas you deal with tornadoes there are some natural uh, disasters no matter where you live but you deal with it the best that you can and so we uh, give thanks to God that so far no casualties have been reported I'm certain there are property damage and some lives lost especially animal uh, you know but but yeah so thank you all right any anything else besides Tonga keep them in your prayer please Pray for those, for that community, and for the people of the synagogue. As you know, you have a new bishop. I did share something, you know, on the our Facebook page, so you can go there and see an introduction by the bishop. And there is a welcoming gathering that is happening, I believe, on the 5th of February. So if you're interested in going, it will be at Grace United Methodist Church in Fort Worth. Uh, and let me know if you're interested in going and meeting him. I was just going to ask um, if everyone had, uh, some people are maybe not on uh, where they get the text messages. Has everyone gotten the word that, that Leland's memorial service will, will be postponed until the COVID gets a little bit 
Has anyone here not heard about that? Raise your hand, because we're going to sign you up today. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that. <clears throat> yeah, so the family uh, decided to delay the service, mainly because of the COVID situation. And they would like to wait for the COVID situation to start going on a downward trend before they can schedule that. So we're probably looking at a spring uh, memorial service. But please do keep the Stevens family in your prayer. You have lost your parents within a matter of uh, six weeks. That's, um, that's something devastating that you grieve and you deal with. But hey, Connor and Tyler's birthdays were on Friday. Friday. Happy birthday, Connor. <laughs> and happy birthday to Tyler in the heavens. <laughs> yes. All right, anyone else have any other announcements that you would like to share or anything that you want to share with us? If there are no other announcements, if you're not, please rise and join us in the call to worship. Oh, and by the way, we have our church meetings this Wednesday. So we start with trustees at 6 and then finance and, ad and admin council beginning at 6.30. Sing praise to God, all the peoples. Praise God, who really loves us all. Don't be afraid and do not doubt God's love. Open our hearts, O oh God, and help us to receive that love. Dance in joy to the Spirit of God. Let our spirits resound with joy and God's life of joy. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts to the surprising ways in which you offer to us your love and your presence. Help us to truly believe in the wondrous ways that you work in our lives. Give us hearts and spirits for service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
as a community, as believers, as brothers and sisters. We gather in this space, O oh God, to give you thanks and to praise you. We give you thanks for your many blessings. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the joy that we experience in our lives. But we also give you thanks, O oh God, for the challenges that we encounter daily. And we give you thanks that you always provide a path for us. We give you thanks, O oh God, that we are able to gather in this warm place. For some out there do not have a roof over their head. For some people do not have a sense of belonging to a community. So we give you thanks, O oh God, for this community. We give you thanks, O oh God, for this church that you have called us to be in ministry with one another, to share our many joys and our sorrows with each other, and to provide encouragement for one another, especially during difficult times. This morning, God, as we gather in your house, we remember a faithful servant of yours, who is no longer with us. And we give you thanks, O oh Lord, for the life of Leland. He served your church faithfully all his days. And we give you thanks, O oh God, that he had touched many people with his ministry, with his smile, but especially serving this church in the various capacities that we were, that he was asked. We pray, O oh God, for the Stevens family. We pray, Lord, for the people who are grieving this morning because he is no longer with us. We remember, O oh Lord, that we just lost a gene 45 days prior to Leland. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for Leland and Jean's life. May you continue to walk with us in the path of righteousness. May you continue to walk with us, reminding us to be faithful and to be gracious and to offer mercy and love to all those whom we encounter. Today, this morning, O oh God, we remember the people of Tonga who experience a violent volcano a couple days ago. And the rest of the world were impacted. We pray, O oh God, that whoever needs assistance, that you be there. Although our communication line that may be down, our communication line with you is always open. And we give you thanks, O oh God, that you always provide a way for us to communicate with you, to come to you in prayer, seeking your help, seeking, we pray for their comfort and for their peace. We pray God for all people everywhere, for those who are dealing with an illness, for those who are struggling with life, whatever that may be. We pray for your healing, and we pray for your mercy and grace. For anything else that I may be failing to mention by name, we lift them up to you and we lift up our thoughts and what's in our minds. For this we pray in your son's name, Jesus Christ, and, he ha and as he taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When we talk about 
a lot about uh, news headlines this morning before church and during our prayer and announcement time. Uh, talk about uh, some situations going on. Well, uh, here's a newspaper. We don't really read our newspapers as much today. We use this for our information and our news. But I want to read you a story that might have appeared in um, the Daily Galilean or the Jerusalem Times. Had there been a newspaper named that back then? It says, the title is, Wedding Guest Turns Water Into Wine. That sounds like a good title, huh? I want to read about that. On Tuesday, a woman named Mary was in Cana to attend a wedding. A large number of guests, including her son, a man named Jesus, also attended the wedding. Guests at the wedding were reportedly having a good time until the host ran out of wine. At that point, it seemed the happy celebration might turn into a disaster. Some of the wedding guests thought that perhaps Jesus might have a solution to the problem, so they reported to him that they were out of wine. When told about the problem, Jesus at first seemed unwilling to do anything, but after some encouragement from his mother, he finally agreed to help. Eyewitnesses at the wedding reported that Jesus noticed several large water jars nearby and instructed some of the servants to fill them with water. After the jars had been filled with water, he told them to dump some of the water out of the jars and take it to the man in charge of serving the wine. When the wine steward tasted the wine, the water, he discovered that it had been turned into wine. Wedding guests were amazed at the turn of events and said that the wine was the best they had ever tasted. And this is the best part. As a result of this miraculous event, many people are following Jesus everywhere he goes, and many believe that he might even be the long-awaited Messiah. So we're going to turn our water into wine. Maybe. I haven't done this since last year, but I always do it for the kids. And you know, Jesus is working miracles in all of us every single day. Amen? Amen. Every time we wake up, that's a new miracle. Yay! <laughs> so remember that, and remember that it is significant that we drink wine every month uh, to, to re represent Jesus' blood that he gave his life for us. And remember that was his first miracle. So next time you read a newspaper or look on your phone to see the news, think about the headlines and how that news must have spread of that great story. That was a good story. I like the good stories in the paper, don't you? Amen. All right, please rise for the next hymn. that you give. We know that these are not for us to hold on to, but are gifts for us to share. Gifts from you meant for giving. As we offer our tithes and offerings, prompt us to commit more than dollars, but to see the gifts you have written on our hearts and to share generously of these as well. We pray these words in the name of Jesus, in whose way we follow, for whose love we are eternally grateful. Amen. Amen.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. expectations. We think that we are the one thing that matters most in life, so we place ourselves at the center of our own universe. Forgive us when we show how shallow our faith is. Help us to really understand the miraculous ways in which you have already worked in our lives and will continue to work as we journey in faith. Bring to us the light of joy and let it flood through our whole beings that we may be transformed into people of joyful service and faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> God's love is continually poured out for us. Drink from the cup of forgiveness and compassion, dear ones. In Jesus' name we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Today's scriptures from John Chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. <coughs> Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, May your abiding presence continue to be with us this day. Continue to speak to us, O Lord, your word of life and your word of hope. For this we pray in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I think some of you know that I was at a wedding this weekend in Anchorage, Alaska. As a matter of fact, I was a part of the wedding party, the officiator. Oh. And so uh, to tell you a little bit of context about the, the wedding, I have a niece. I have, first of all, I have two brothers in Anchorage and their growing families. This one niece wanted, uh, well, 
She wanted to be together with her boyfriend. She's 19 years old. Her boyfriend, also 19 years of age. He is, uh, was newly enlisted in the Marines, and so he was going to be stationed in Hawaii. That's a long ways from Anchorage. She wanted her dad's blessings for her to be with him. And my brother said, not just no, but heck no. <laughs> That's not gonna happen unless you legalize this, meaning in marriage. And so the proposal took place on Christmas Day. That was December 25th. The wedding took place on January the 8th, you see. <laughs> so on the 25th of December, I get a call from my brother, sister-in-law, and the niece. Next thing you know, I was on a plane to Anchorage. As it was a short amount of planning, uh, planning to do, their options uh, were very limited. At first, we were going to have the wedding at this uh, one church, but on the evening of the rehearsal, their pastor informed our family that we could only have 50 people. Well, if you know my family, that's gonna be an issue <laughs> because there are 50 children. <laughs> and so we had to change it from the church to hold it at the event uh, center, the event place where the reception was gonna take place because it was a little bigger. And so, uh, you know, so if there is uh, events that all, is always stressful for a lot of families, if not all of us, are funerals and weddings, especially weddings. The wedding uh, took place and uh, someone told me at the reception that there was another issue. The issue is that there was no wine. Not that we ran out of wine, but wine was not even part of the plan. And I said, oh no, <laughs> Jesus and I can't have that. But we're here in the house and we're gonna fix this issue. So with a little bit of encouragement and a little bit of influence, next thing you know, my nephew, one of my nephews showed up with a few bottles, take care of the issue. And so this morning, our story is about another wedding with a similar issue that we're told that the issue is that they actually uh, wine was a main item for this wedding and they ran out. But thankfully, Jesus was in the house to take care of it. And his mother went to Jesus and said, do something about it, son. And we're told uh, in the story as John tells it, that Jesus looked at his mother and said, woman, what do I have anything to do with it? My time has not come. <clears throat> and we here in the 21st century, looking back at it thinking, well, oh, that's not an appropriate way that you address your mother, <laughs> right? But actually it probably was for Jesus and that culture during that time. I know that for me and in my culture, we didn't address our parents. I didn't address my parents as mom and dad. It was actually, we addressed them by their first names. So we addressed them by their real name, and which is a good thing, because if your child ever get lost and they ask you, who are your parents? You don't want your child to say mom and dad, because there are billions of moms and dads. But, you know, different culture, different situation, different context. But uh, the issue here at the wedding was the wine. And if you had ever hosted a wedding, you don't want to run out of stuff because that is an embarrassment. You know, you, that is an embarrassment for the wedding party and if you are the host of that wedding. And here, especially in the Jewish culture, 
it was a big deal. If you ran out of wine, that was a major deal that you did not run out of the supplies or the things that you were supposed to be providing your guests with. So here is Jesus' mother coming to him and asking him for help and then told the servants, do everything that he tells you. And so Jesus told the servants to, to, to fill up the water jars. And naturally, they probably thought that they were being asked to replenish the water for washing. You know, as people were arriving and guests were arriving, you know, they probably had dirty feet, dirty uh, feet from walking in the dust. But to their surprise, Jesus told them to fill their empty wine jugs from the water jars and then take them to the chief steward for a tasting. And the steward's response, as Brian read the story for us, wow, this is the best wine in the house, the best wine that we have had. And it wasn't just a few bottles of wine as I had received that last weekend. It was 120 to 180 gallons of wine. So I don't know how big their party was or how big the crowd was, but that is a ton of wine. And it makes you think people were hanging out a little bit too long. And, uh, and probably if there was Uber, they would be calling an Uber to get a ride home after the party. What's that? Uber, Uber <laughs> yeah. And the camel will probably drop them off. <laughs> but turning water into wine was Jesus' first miracle here in John, which John referred to as a sign. What Jesus did at the wedding in Cana of Galilee was not just about turning the water into wine. It actually pointed to something much larger, to something much bigger, something more significant. It pointed to the identity of Jesus and who Jesus is and who Jesus was to become. And it invites us to share in the wonder of miracles, to enter into the joyous celebration made possible by the gift that Jesus gave to the crowd that day. And it invites us to see the abundance and graciousness of Jesus' gift and to get a glimpse into the character of God. The Gospel of John says that from the beginning of creation, there was always the Word of God. The Word of God that when spoken created everything and things came into being. John says that Jesus was the very same word of God that was spoken in the beginning. In Jesus, that word became a human being. Jesus was and is the very word of God which, when spoken, changed things. I think of us today. While we don't have the miracle that took place in Cana that day, we have our own lives to witness. Just look around you. Just look around you, not just here in this space, but also as you leave here today. Life indeed is a miracle. Some of the things that we own and that we depend on is a miracle. I know that many times we take things for granted, but there are so many things that are staring at us right in our faces that are miracle. Our modern way of live, living <clears throat> that we get too accustomed to, like our cell phones, like this mic, like our cars, like the heating in this place, like running water, and all the luxury of living in the modern world, those are all miracles. The volcano that erupted in Tonga yesterday the sonic boom that created a tsunami that was felt throughout half of the world yesterday. Here in the United States, in Japan, in South America, and even in the UK, is quite literally 
which is quite literally on the other side of Tonga, some 10,000 miles away, and how people in Tonga survived. That is a miracle. It's a miracle that there is life after a violent eruption under seas that anyone nearby, not just in Tonga, but in the nearby countries, in the other Pacific islands, it is a miracle that any of us are still here today. The Gospel of John reminds us that life itself is a wonder and a miracle. There is a proper and true way that life is meant to be lived. And in fact, it is through Jesus that we find that truth, that way in life itself. In Jesus, life consists of looking and listening for God. Listening for God's voice for as long as we live. Seeking to live and to practice the ways of Jesus. Holding our fellow human beings in the highest regard. Second only to God who spoke this world and our lives into existence. Perhaps what, what we may need to know as disciples of Jesus is to follow Jesus more closely, to practice discipleship and to live into it more authentically, to be grateful to God for all that we have, to be grateful to Jesus for his teachings, for his teaching to us to love God, to love each other, to love our neighbors, to love even our enemies. We take life for granted, and that is for sure. Maybe we all need to give thanks to God for Jesus, for being at the ultimate gift, for the miracle of his saving grace and his saving love. Perhaps maybe we can be reminded that the sign at Cana was more than just turning water into wine, but rather it did point to something much, much bigger than that. It pointed us indeed to the identity of Jesus, that Jesus indeed is the Son of God, that was revealed to us and it continues to be revealed to us today, that he is the bringer of the divine life, that he is the bringer of the divine gifts that is beyond our human deserving. Human resources ran out in Cana that day. There was no more wine. But Jesus supplied the abundance of the wine that day, the gift of wine, just as he did by feeding the 5,000 just as he did when he healed the sick, just as he did when he gave sight to the blind, just as he did when he made the lame walk, just as he did when he calmed the storm, just as he did when he saved so many lives yesterday from the eruption of the volcano in Tonga. We can only give thanks to God for the miracle of saving the lives of those who were held hostage in the Colleyville Synagogue yesterday. Perhaps maybe the question that, that we all need to be asking ourselves today, what is it that, that we have run out of that we can go to Jesus and ask for help? What is it in our lives that we have either run out of or will be running out of soon that we can remember to go to Jesus and ask him to help us? Maybe for some of us it is health. Maybe for others it might be relationship with friends, with family. Maybe for some it might be money. Maybe it's too much worries. Maybe it's security. Maybe it's some sort of an addiction. Whatever it may be that we are running out of, perhaps
perhaps we need to remember, as John reminds us this morning with this story, that we need to remember that there is a Savior, and his name is Jesus, that we can go to for help, that we can go to to have our cup refilled. The miracles of Jesus continues today. If only we take a look around and take notice. The abundance of God's gifts to us is through Jesus. The word made flesh would ultimately end up on a cross. But it doesn't end there, for it resulted in the resurrecting power of God. At Cana, the gift was wine. A sign is given and it points us forward to the hour when that gift would be new life. Jesus demonstrated this with the gift of bread. When he took the bread, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and then he also took the cup of wine, representing his blood, representing new life, and offering it to those who are willing to accept it. The cup of wine represented forgiveness. It represented grace. It represented the character of God and what God is willing to offer to you and I. That is the gift and that is the miracle that we have today, that is being offered to us today. If only we would remember that wherever we are in life, whatever it is that we are running out of, may we remember that we have Jesus with us, that we can access him anytime, at any place, wherever we are, we can go to him and ask him to help us with whatever that situation or circumstance may be. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. You may now rise for our closing hymn.